Hey everyone, Sean Stevenson here, author of the Throne series, and today, that building right there, that's Barnes & Noble, because today is release day, people. It's Goblin Monday! I am so excited to go pick up this Goosebumps House of Shivers book number two, Goblin Monday by R.L. Stein. I thought about ordering it online and having it delivered, but then I thought, you know what? I think it'd be more fun to go get it in the store and have that be the experience. So I'm at my Barnes and Noble right there and I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna go pick up my copy of Goblin Monday and I'm super excited to read this book. I know already I've seen the glimpse. I have not looked at any reviews. I've not still read the back matter of this book but I've seen some people did not like this book. So we'll see what I think. All right, we're gonna go in and go take a look. Okay, so they only had one copy of Goblin Monday and I got it. I actually even went around looking to see, are there like, is there an end cap somewhere that I'm missing or a display of some kind and I couldn't find any. So I found the one copy that was in the kids section with the other Goosebumps book, kind of like not even faced out. It was like turned in with the spine out. So, but I got the copy, so I now have the book which I will show you momentarily. Okay, so I'm back in the car. I just picked up the book, Goblin Monday, Goosebumps House of Shivers, book number two. I'm excited to read this one. So I decided I was going to give, since I have not read the back matter, I have not listened to any reviews, I do not know what this book is about. So here are my predictions for what I think Goblin Monday is gonna be about. I think obviously it's gonna be about goblins on a Monday. And my prediction is there's gonna be a kid visiting a family member, like a grandparent, who discovers that there are little goblins that live in the woods behind their house. And every Monday, the goblins come out and like kind of play some mischievous tricks. But then I think the kid is going to accidentally like bother the goblins somehow and so they're gonna take revenge on this kid. So I think that's what it'll be about. I think the twist could be, this is my prediction, I think the twist is gonna be that the grandparent or family member has a deal with the goblins to like feed them and take care of them and the goblins will help them but the deal can be broken if they do something wrong. So. I don't know, those are my predictions. We'll see if I'm probably totally wrong when I read the book, but I'm excited for Goblin Monday. So we're gonna read this book and find out what happens. Okay, so I have just finished reading Goblin Monday, Goosebumps House of Shivers book number two by R.L. Stein, And I will not say anything about whether my predictions were correct or not here, because I feel like that's spoilery, so. I will save that for the spoiler discussion that will be going up shortly after this video on the channel. So, but let's talk about Goosebumps House of Shivers book number two, Goblin Monday, because there's a lot to talk about here. Now, I have gone and watched some reviews after finish reading it because I wanted to collect my thoughts because as soon as I finished reading this book, I thought I need to sit with this for a minute and decide what I think about the ending. So I'm not gonna say anything about the ending here because that is spoiler territory and this is a spoiler free review. Now, what is this book about? So Goblin Monday is all about this kid named Mario who he has never been in like deep snow before. So he goes with his friends Todd and Jewel to Vermont to stay with Todd and Jewel's grandparents and Todd and Jewel's parents for a week of having fun in the snow and just being out in the woods of Vermont. So they head out to Vermont and when they get there, Mario starts to notice there seems to be movement in the yard. Like every now and again, he'll see a shadow and when he turns to look, it's gone. Or he'll turn and see something that he thinks is moving but then all of a sudden everything is still. So there's a lot of moments where he is wondering are we being followed? Is something happening? Is there something else out here in these woods? Because they are out in the woods at this house. And so slowly he comes to discover that maybe it's a Goblin Monday after all. So I won't say anything else about the plot because anything else would be spoilers. This book had a lot of classic 
creepy goosebumps moments. So there are definitely some parts that reminded me of the girl who cried monster a little bit because Mario in this book is the only one seeing things. Everybody else cannot see anything. And he keeps talking about it, but no one is listening to him. And so as I was thinking about it, I was like, this is like gaslighting the Goosebumps book because it really is. I think there is a deep conversation going on here behind the regular action of what's happening about gaslighting because in this book, Mario is the only one seeing different things and he keeps telling people, which I thought was a very good change of pace. Mario's character, he like even says multiple times in the narration, I just can't hold something in. I always want to say it. And I thought, I love that because usually in these kinds of books, the character sees something and they don't ever say anything and everybody's just kind of keeps going on with life and that character keeps seeing things and doesn't say anything when there could have been plot resolution because they said something so here mario does say something he blurts out things often that he sees and people don't believe him and are literally telling him no that's not true that did not happen and so Mario is totally being gaslit in throughout this whole entire book. And I just kept thinking, wow, this is very interesting for a Goosebumps novel to be talking about this. Because I, I think in other Goosebumps books that I have read, R.L. Stein doesn't usually go for the message, you know, the, the thing that's like behind the book and here's like the whole idea. But I do think that when someone writes a story, sometimes things get woven into the story structure they might not even have intended. And so in the story structure of this book, I really think there's a lot about gaslighting, about being a person who is saying, I'm seeing something, but being told, no, you're not. And that was a very interesting message throughout this book. I mean, I guess it kind of does have a little bit to do with the whole classic idea of like the boy who cried wolf, who, you know, says he sees a wolf, but doesn't see a wolf, but then finally does see a wolf. And when he says it, no one believes him. But that's a different sort of situation because in that story, the boy keeps saying that he's, you know, seeing a wolf when he's not and he's lying about it. And the people are believing that he actually is seeing something, not that, you know, he didn't see anything at all in the first place and are being told you're not seeing anything what are you talking about and so mario is that character there's also here the setting is classic goosebumpsy great setting we're on a trip to grandparents house which kind of reminded me of ghost of beach at first like i just thought oh they're going out to the grandparents house and it's kind of a creepy weird house and there's kind of a creepy weird setting and so Mario and Todd and Jewel are exploring this house and you know it's a big old house with lots of weird rooms and things which I just think is classic great goosebumps kind of similar to the first book in this series though the scariest book ever but I thought that was okay the other book series that this this entry in goosebumps kind of reminded me of I will say I think this book tended towards the fantasy side of Goosebumps rather than the scary side. And it really reminded me a lot of Spiderwick. I kept thinking about Spiderwick when I was reading this book and I thought, oh, the, that's kind of Spiderwicky. Oh, that's kind of interesting. I was thinking, did R.L. Stein read Spiderwick recently or something? And that's what inspired this book? I don't know. But Spiderwick was definitely an, kind of an influence on this book, I would say. Spiderwick is all about like Bogarts and goblins and different creatures that are kind of invisible and lurk on the edges of, you know, normal human sight and are out there, but you don't know where they are, or what they're doing. So Spiderwick was definitely, in my opinion, an influence on Goblin Monday. So Goblin Monday, like I said, the setting is really good, really eerie. I do think though, this book, feels like it's a little bit not quite baked in the sense of there is action and there are some scary scenes and some moments there's one moment that I legitimately was a little horrified by and I thought whoa R.L. Stein does not usually go here that's kind of scary but I do think that this book had a little bit of a pacing issue and I think it's because 
it felt a little more like a half-baked idea rather than a full fleshed out story, if that makes sense. I think there's a lot of meandering and I will say, and this is not a spoiler, but I think the twist ending in this one kind of didn't work for me. I, I didn't really love it and in fact I was highly confused by it. I kept thinking, wait, that does that work? I don't know if that actually works with the story you've set up and the characters you've set up and the plot you've set up. So I do think that this book in particular seems a little bit not quite all there in my opinion. I think that the pacing was a little bit slow and I think that the storyline itself was not quite up to par. I think the scariest book ever did have some genuine plot twist moments that surprised me. And this book, while I didn't guess the ending, it's one of those sorts of endings where I don't know if anyone could ever guess the details of that. I think that that was kind of a, it's just kind of one of those goosebumps endings that comes out of nowhere that you're like, wait, what? <laughs> I don't know what's going on here, but okay, R.L. Stein, I'll go with it. So at the end of the day, Goosebumps House of Shivers, book number two, Goblin Monday. I enjoyed reading it. I liked the snowy vibe. I think it was a perfect February, March read. I think that that is like, this is the perfect time of year to read a book like this. There is a little bit of a cozy factor to it because they're in this house and there's like these little fantasy creatures, maybe, maybe, running around that you don't know if they are or not. And so it was a fun read. I just felt like it wasn't quite up to par as some of the other ones. So at the end of the day, I'm going to give Goblin Monday a three and a half stars out of five. I think it was good. I enjoyed it, but I did not love the ending. And I do feel like while the conversation about gaslighting is very important, and I think that gaslighting is a real thing that happens to a lot of people, I think that this book kind of meanders with that and then doesn't do anything with it. I kind of feel like it is a thing where R.L. Stein wrote it into this book without realizing he did and so he didn't do anything with it. I do think that happens sometimes to authors where they unintentionally have a theme of some kind that is woven into the text of their book that they don't even recognize or realize and maybe an editor doesn't pick up on and so they don't get to rewrite it with that in mind and thinking about the second draft or third draft with the thought of oh this gaslighting thing is actually a major part of the storyline maybe we should do something with that so at the end of the day it was fun. It's another entry of the Goosebumps series. I didn't hate it. It was like a three and a half. I think I like Scariest Book Ever just a little bit more because of how intense that book was and because of the plot twists in that book I thought were excellent. This one also does the two-part structure, like the first one had a three-part structure. So, and I, I don't think the parts are necessary. I don't know why R.L. Stein is putting parts into these books because the parts don't seem necessary in my opinion. In Scariest Book Ever, I think they worked. In this one, I don't think you needed it. It flowed a little more than that other book and didn't have as many twists as the other one. So anyways, that's my review of Goblin Monday. Have you read this book? What do you think about it? Let me know down in the comments below and until next time everybody, keep reading. Bye!